In order to create a Windows Virtual Machine in Azure, you need to perform the following steps. First, you need to have an Azure account and you need to log into this portal.azure.com. That is the prerequisite. Once you log into the Azure portal, right now I have multiple resources. That's why it is showing all these resources, resource group, etc., which I have used recently. What you need to do over here, you need to click on this hammer icon and you can directly click on create resource or at the bottom, you would be able to see virtual machines. You can click on this particular hammer like icon and click on create a resource. Now, this UI of this page changes from time to time. At this point of time, you can see directly this virtual machine is coming over here and you can directly click on this create icon on this create link or suppose this icon is not there at the time you are viewing this particular video. You can type virtual machine. Select this and it would be listing down all the virtual machine samples which you can use. Click on this virtual machine icon. Now, under this page, we have the overview and other details like what are the different plans, usage information, etc. I'm just going to create this clicking on create. First important thing, you need to have a valid subscription. I have this current pay as you go subscription. That's why it is populated here. In your case, you need to have one subscription which allows VM creation. Resource group, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to create one Windows VM. That's why the resource group name I'm giving as WinVM RG. Once the VM creation is done, I'm going to delete the resource so that I don't incur any additional cost. In your case, you can create a new resource group or you can use your existing resource group if needed. Providing virtual machine name, I have given a name WinVM demo. Region, you can choose as per your preference. Scrolling down here, security type by default is trusted launch virtual machines. In case you need nested virtualization, suppose you want to install Docker, you have to select standard in that case. Otherwise, you can keep it as is. Image, I'm going to use Windows. So I have recently used this Windows. That is why it is populating over here. Otherwise, you can type Windows over here and the available options would be shown here. If you see, these are the ones recently used and these are the ones recommended Gen 2 images compatible with trusted launch. If I scroll down, I have Windows 10 Pro as well. I'm selecting this. Now the drop down, whatever options is showed, that is not all. If you want to see all the images and check them, you can click on this see all images here it will provide you the overall list available in azure if i want windows i can use this filter and select windows only accordingly it would show me all the available resources in windows anyways i'm going back to the original screen closing this i can configure the vm generation as well if i click on this particular link on the right hand side, it is providing me two options. I'm continuing with generation two, clicking on cancel. By default, x64 is selected. ARM64 is not supported with this particular image. Scroll down, provide username and password. Let me quickly do that. I have added the username and password. Checking this licensing option. Click on next. Keeping the disk size as is. By default, premium SSD is selected. Delete with the VM. That is fine. Scrolling down further. Networking. I would check this delete public IP and NIC when VM is deleted. The reason being for public IP, if you see over here, there is a dedicated cost. And I don't want to incur the cost when I don't have the VM any further. Click on next management. Keep everything as is. I generally enable this option. Auto shutdown so that I don't incur additional costs in case I forget to stop the VM. If you have a VM which will run 24 to 7 every day, every hour, that's fine. Otherwise, if you are using it for a personal purpose, I strictly recommend you enable this auto shutdown option to prevent any accidental additional cost, right? It is a good practice. If there is option to use it, you should definitely use it. And what I do, I generally change the time zone as per my own time zone. I'm from India, so a time when I won't be working, I put that particular time, maybe 10 p.m., whatever is suitable. Click on next. We don't have to add anything over here. Click on advanced. Here also, we don't have anything additional. Just click on review plus create. It is showing the monthly cost over here in Indian rupee. Based on your location, your currency would be shown. I'm going to click on create.
in case you have missed entering something or something wrong is entered there would be some validation message shown here and you can correct that in my case validation passed and the vm creation is in progress you can see the message deployment in progress it will take a while i'll pause the recording once the deployment is complete i'll resume now it's displaying the message your deployment is complete i can click on go to resource it's displaying the vm details over here on the right hand side you can see this public address you can copy this now i'm going to connect to this particular vm as it is in started state now i have to use rdp to log into this vm search for rdp clicking on remote desktop connection pasting the ip that i have copied under show options i'm going to enter the username allow me to save credentials for future click on connect entering the password and i generally use this remember me click OK, click Yes. Now it is logging into this Windows virtual machine. I'm unchecking all of this because I don't need. You can just skip this. Click on Accept. Now our Windows virtual machine in Azure is ready. Couple of important points I want to highlight here. Let me go back here. If you are not using this particular VM any further, you stop it from here only and make sure you stop it. Otherwise, you are going to incur cost unnecessarily. Within the virtual machine, you never stop this particular VM using this particular option. If you want to stop or restart, always use the portal and use these buttons for stop or restart purpose. In case you need to go to the VM again from the Azure portal directly, how to navigate there? Last time we navigated there from the go to resources button. Generally, what you need to do, you need to go to the resource group and you select your particular resource group. In my case, it was WinVM resource group. Under that, my VM would be displayed. This is the one. Another option would be if you are under home and if you click on virtual machines, all of the virtual machines would be listed and you can select the one which you want to use. In this case, the last one is the VM which we used. So I'm going to stop this VM and delete the resource group later on as I don't need right now. It's showing me it is stopping the virtual machine. As I don't need the uh, virtual machine, I created it only for demo purpose. I would directly go into the resource group and I would delete the entire resource group so that all the associated resources like virtual network, disk, etc., public IP, they are also removed automatically. I don't have to search for the items and delete them manually. Copy this resource group name, click on delete. So that is all for now. What we discussed is a creation of Windows virtual machine in Azure. But apart from creating the VM, we also discussed some additional important points like stopping of VM, deletion of resource group, some cost optimization. I hope this lesson would be useful for you. Thanks for your time.